Hey guys, good morning. I wanted to talk to you on my way to work. The Lord put in my heart generational curses and breaking those generational curses that you do not have to be the same as your mother, your father, your brother, your grandmother, whatever it is that you saw in your home that was dysfunctional. And listen, we all come in some form of dysfunctionality at some level because we are all you know, born into sin. So none of us come from these perfect backgrounds and we all have something that we have to uh, cross. We, ha we all have our, our crosses to bear, right? And so I want to talk to you about that you are not, you know, what your father and your mother, your sister, your brother are. But when you come into Christ, you are a new creation. And I know many people say, well, I grew up in a religious home. I grew up knowing God, being taught by God, especially in the African-American community. You know, we are really big on you go to church, you get baptized. We're really big on God, but it doesn't mean that you have submitted your life to him and that you walked with him in a way that was pleasing you could be introduced to god but also introduced to a sinful nature because there's a lot of mix and mingling that can happen and i suppose that just doesn't happen in the african-american community but in any community i'm just speaking based on my own experiences so you have to forgive me for that i don't mean to isolate any one group um but what I'm saying is that it is so possible that you can grow up and be introduced to God, but also grow up in a home where people don't serve God. There's a true duality. They serve him with their lips, but their actions are far from him. Or there's a mixing that's going on. But when we give our lives personally to Jesus, we become this new creation and we have the opportunity to allow Christ to break every yoke off of our life, to take the uh, chains off of our minds. We don't have to stay bound to our circumstance. And yes, good can come out of even a wicked dysfunctional household. Look at the priest Eli. He was able to uh, train one of the greatest prophets that we have ever known Samuel. He was under, you know, an administration, under a priesthood where the sons were, he saw all kinds of things. And I, and I bet he learned that's not what to do, right? And um, sometimes, you know, God will put you in these households that are dysfunctional, but it's because he wants you to learn something because he knows the beginning from the end. And he's gonna take your life and he's gonna make it what it should because you know the road not to take. You know what you shouldn't do because you've seen some things, am I correct? And so he's gonna take that, your knowledge and your experiences, and he's gonna shape and mold you into what you should be and break those generational curses off of your life. What's a generational curse? You can easily see those. Um, when you see one generation doing the same thing, maybe it's a uh, pregnancy, preteen pregnancy, you see it pop up. Maybe it's not um, divorce. Maybe it's not the ability to hold on to a marriage. You know, you can see these things because it happens one generation after the next generation. And that's how you can tell there is a cycle that is happening. But child of God, you do not have to stay in that cycle. Those things can be broken, but you have to choose to be renewed in Christ. You have to choose to walk with him because I'm here to tell you in so many households all around America, there are a lot of people that are serving God with their mouth, but not from their heart. They're not walking these things out. And until you walk these things out, you know, like Deuteronomy 28 says, you have the choice, what, for life? blessings or you can choose curses but he said i beg of you choose life we have to do that he's not going to force us to do that so we want to choose blessings and that means coming away from anything that opposes the will of god and that means allowing god to examine your life right doesn't make your parents bad doesn't make your grandparents bad it's just that a lot of times people fall into the traps of the enemy because of lack of knowledge you know just not knowing it how 
how can you be in a, a household where you go to church but then they're buying Ouija boards and tarot cards and, and horoscopes this is the mixing and mingling that we're seeing in households all across America because people are not really sold out to Christ and they open doors you know one minute they're opening you to the <laughs> to the kingdom of God and then in the next they've opened you up into a demonic realm and so you've got so many doors open that God wishes to do life he wishes to to do all these things but then you've got to fight with the enemy on this particular side of the you know equation because of the doors that have been open you all Man, I can say so much about that, but that's why, you know, every man, every child, every person, when we get to a certain age, we have the opportunity to give our lives to, to Christ and there's no one we, we can blame. And we don't want to point the finger, right? Because we all have an opportunity to submit our own lives, but it's important to know these things so that you don't open doors in your household, child of God. As you're serving the Lord, you're not opening a door to the Lord and the enemy, right? We have to choose this day who we serve because God is so full of grace. He doesn't want us to be, you know, He's trying to bless us and then the enemy comes in and shuts down that blessing because we have freely opened the door out of ignorance. I hope I'm making sense, you all. But today is a new day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Today is full of new mercies. And this is why I've been saying um, we have to allow the Lord to examine our homes, examine our life, examine us from top to bottom, from the rooter to the tutor, because this is the year of the fig tree. No one is exempt from this where we have to truly allow the Lord to clean us up, to purify our hearts and our minds and our spirits, that we lay down every idol, everything that has made itself, you know, number one in our lives. We have to lay it and surrender it to God, right? And we have to walk in obedience. The word that the Lord gave me today was Psalm 95. I posted it in the community, you all. Hope you check it out. It's the challenge of the day to worship him in spirit and truth and obedience, allowing him to just examine our hearts to see where we are so we can shift and make the needed corrections. But that's in the community post. I'm not going to get into that. But I just pray that, you know, we will be a people that are truly serious about seeking him and allowing him to come into our hearts and our homes and doing it in his way. Not what we think is right on our own timelines. Because I'm telling you, if you continue down that road of doing it in your own way, in your own strength, and what seems right to you, you're headed towards destruction. This is the year of the fig tree. 2024, you all. The year of rewards. Or the year of destruction it's really that simple and what I've been trying to you know get across to everyone is that judgment starts in the house of the Lord first with his people with those who are called by his name that's where the judgment's going to start there were ten virgins five were wise five not so much but I'm here to tell you, you can break those cycles by the spirit of God that is in you. He's come to break every yoke off of your life. But will you let him? Will you lay down your idols? Will you lay down every way that you were taught? This is the what it is. This is what it looks like. And let him renew your mind. Will you let him give you a new software program in Christ? You've got to be rebooted, child of God. This system has trained you in a way, the world systems that are the opposite of the kingdom. So I just pray that you all have a blessed day. I pray that this word finds its way to whomever it needs to, to go to. It's a rainy day here in Alabama, headed to work. I pray that you all have a beautiful day, that you choose to walk in grace and love, forgiveness, um, put others ahead of yourself. Do good for someone else. Uplift someone else. Support someone else. Encourage someone else. Take your eyes off of yourself and put them onto someone else that you can make their day. All right, guys. I love you. Thank you um, for all of the new subscribers. Thank you for blessing me with all of your wonderful support. 
and your encouragement. I am so enjoying getting to know each and every one of you. If you have a prayer request, please send it to my email. My email is in the description box under the about me section. And um, yes, you are the head, not the tail, above only and never beneath. And God loves you. And I love you with the love of Christ. See you later.